In Hollywood, it only takes one role to turn you into an icon, and it only takes one moment to take it all away. Long before cancel culture was a phrase, one iconic celebrity had a meltdown of epic proportions. As many television stars have found out, life after a hugely successful show can be quite tough for some, and it was for the cast of Seinfeld for a while, with Julia Louis-Dreyfus winning countless Emmys, Jason Alexander returning to his stage roots, and Jerry Seinfeld continuing his legendary stand-up career. But it's time we find out what the f happened to the other member of Seinfeld's iconic cast. Yep, we're doing it. What the f happened to Michael Richards? You know, Kramer. Every time I see this backdrop, I think about Kramer fucking up. <laughs> but to truly understand what the f happened to Michael Richards, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1949, California. Of course, little Kramer was the class clown, experimenting early in the classroom with physical comedy, flopping his body all over the place to make all the little kids laugh. He instantly knew he had a talent, even using that talent when he joined the army, performing in an army theater group. And in 1979, Michael Richards would join the stand-up circuit. You know, standing up on a stage and telling jokes into a microphone. Michael Richards' career would take off when he was cast on ABC's Answer to Saturday Night Live, called Fridays, in 1980. Although the show was short-lived, airing for just three seasons, Michael Richards was part of one of the most famous moments of that series. So much so that it was recreated in the 1999 Milos Forman, Jim Carrey movie Man on the Moon, with the late great Norm MacDonald playing Michael Richards. The scene involved guest star Andy Kaufman refusing to deliver his scripted lines, which led Richards to stand up and get the cue cards, which led to a small outburst, with Kaufman throwing his drink in Richards' face. Of course, much like most of Andy Kaufman's genius bits, Richards would later claim that he was in on the joke from the start. Which I honestly for a second thought his racist outburst was. I was like, oh, he's doing an Andy Kaufman thing. Oh, no, he, he's not. And funny enough, it was Norm MacDonald who had one of the most interesting takes on the public meltdown of Michael Richards. Let's listen to that now. He was out of his head element. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. But there's no way that a guy who's racist screams it at the top of his lungs. You know what I mean? Well, it's certainly, certainly, I don't think he was anticipating the fact that a cell phone could have been putting no. this on to CNN as he was saying it. No, you no, know, no. I think he, he was right. thinking. Right. He wouldn't do it on uh, the Craig Ferguson show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe on here, though. We could maybe to get him on here to recreate that rant. Okay, let's go back to the 80s. With Michael Richards' star slowly rising in the comedy scene, he would be a steady character actor in several films, including the spoof film Young Doctors in Love in 1982. There was also the movie The House of God, 1984's The Ratings Game, and Transylvania 65000. Uh. Transylvania 65000. While also turning in solid guest spots on shows like Night Court, St. Elsewhere, Cheers, Hill Street Blues, Miami Vice, and Fresno. The overarching theme of much of Michael Richards' work, his art, at this time was to parody television cliches. So it was no surprise when he was cast in the cult classic Weird Al Yankovic film, UHF. Weird Al actually wrote the role of the janitor who loves his mop specifically for Michael Richards, because Weird Al is a huge fan of Michael Richards' stand-up comedy, and loved him on the show Fridays. And if Weird Al thinks you're funny, then that means you're funny. 
And at first, Michael Richards had to turn down the role because at the moment he was suffering from Bell's palsy and his face was paralyzed. But luckily, Michael Richards quickly recovered and blew everyone away when he went to test read for the film UHF. And when that movie UHF hit theaters in 1989, it was ultimately a financial disappointment, getting lost in a crowded summer field of blockbusters, and it was only able to make $6.1 million off a $5 million budget. But after years, after decades, UHF was eventually looked at as a comedy classic. A few weeks before the launch of UHF in theaters, a TV series featuring Michael Richards launched on NBC to severely low ratings. NBC actually offered this failing series to Fox, who declined to pick it up, which I'm sure was a decision Fox would soon regret, as that low-rated series was titled The Seinfeld Chronicles, which would later be simply retitled to Seinfeld, and go on to become one of the biggest shows ever created. Yes! 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 The series Seinfeld featured several crazy, kooky supporting characters, but the craziest, the kookiest of them all was part of the core four, Jerry's eccentric neighbor, Cosmo Kramer played to absolute comedic perfection by Michael Richards, who was reluctantly brought onto the show by his Friday's co-star Larry David, after Jerry Seinfeld insisted on him for the part. Larry David was like, no! And Jerry Seinfeld was like, come on! And Larry David was like, ah, okay! And Jerry was like, good! And Larry David was like, good! And Michael Richards was like, but yeah, with the use of his outrageous physical comedy, Kramer quickly became the standout character of this series, with the audience exploding with applause every time Richards would burst into Jerry's apartment with his iconic entrance. That actually looks really dangerous. Like, what if somebody's standing right there? He would have just hit them. This character was perfect for all the talents and skills that Michael Richards has. He was able to enter any scene and completely take control or tear it into pieces. Either way, it was beautiful to witness. He was more than just a silly clown who fell down. The dude was an absolute comedy wrecking ball, and nobody was safe. Throughout his nine seasons on the show, Richards would be nominated for five Emmy Awards for the Supporting Actor category, winning the honor three times, more than any other cast member of the series, with an additional five nominations at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, winning that award twice as part of the ensemble cast. But Seinfeld wasn't the only place that you could catch Michael Richards on the boob tube. He would pop up as a voice on Dinosaurs, and would appear as Kramer on an episode of Mad About You, while appearing as himself, Michael Richards, on The Larry Sanders Show. And he would team up with Elaine, again, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, in the TV movie adaptation of Neil Simon's London Suite. While he became a television icon, you could also see him on the big screen, bringing his eccentric energy to a variety of roles, like the bad guy in Problem Child, the motel clerk in Coneheads, an insensitive man in So I Married an Axe Murderer, and a cowardly accountant who finds himself in a diehard situation in Airheads. However, in 1995, Michael Richards would garner some acclaim with his paranoid performance in the Diane Keaton-directed Unstrung Heroes, where he would be nominated for the funniest supporting actor at the American Comedy Awards. Oh, don't you worry. You're gonna figure a way. Remember, you're the one to watch. The one to Yes, you are. You're the one to watch. That acclaim would continue when he voiced the wolf 
in the Academy Award-nominated short film Redux Writing Hood, after which he would get his chance to co-headline a big studio comedy when he starred opposite Jeff Daniels and Charlize Theron in Trial by Error. It didn't really do that well at the box office, but luckily Richards still had Seinfeld. I mean, we all do that, you know. I'll keep a little bit of ourselves hidden. Then, on May 14th, 1998, the series finale of Seinfeld aired to historic numbers, with 76.3 million viewers, accounting for nearly 60% of all television watchers that night. The series finale of Seinfeld became the fourth highest watched series finale in television history, behind the finales of M.A.S.H., Cheers, and The Fugitive. Of course, the finale polarized viewers, with some calling it the worst of all time, but I kind of understand what they were going for. Bringing back all the iconic characters for the finale was a stroke of genius, but it was just a stroke that was misstroked. <laughs> it didn't really work. And yeah, a spoiler alert for Seinfeld, but yeah, maybe having your characters all end up in prison at the end of the series isn't the, the best way to end Seinfeld. I don't know. I like it more than most people, but it ain't great. But all the other episodes are great. You just cost me some money. Cool it, lady. Cool it. Cool it, lady. Cool it. Police officers, freeze right there. So then came the question, what are these now legendary performers going to do? Well, for Richards, he would take on the role of Wilkins in the TNT broadcast of Charles Dickens' David Copperfield. Before launching his own series, The Michael Richards Show. And you would think a show called The Michael Richards Show would be about Michael Richards, but no, Michael Richards does not play Michael Richards in The Michael Richards Show. He's playing a private detective character named Vic Nardoza. He conceived of the show because he wanted to play a different type of character than, you know, Kramer. But when test audiences didn't respond to the character, the studio made him make the character more like Kramer, adding more wild and crazy Kramer-esque characteristics. But bad reviews and low viewership saw the show cancelled after just eight episodes. This led to the creation of the phrase, the Seinfeld Curse. Wait, 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 ow! <laughs> and then, on November 17th, 2006, what Richards had spent over 40 years cultivating, a career in the entertainment industry, was essentially ruined in seconds. For Mr. Michael Richards, it was a night he had done for over 25 years. You know, get on the stage, tell some jokes. For comedy fans, it was a chance to see an iconic TV actor in a different setting than they were used to, up close and personal, on a stage, with a microphone. But what happened has gone down in infamy as the biggest implosion of a career ever. Nowadays, in this post hashtag me too iPhone era, we're kind of used to seeing big name people having their entire careers destroyed because of horrible behavior caught on a cell phone video or a tweet. But for Michael Richards, one horrible outburst that attempted to push the boundaries of comedy to a level past sanity and decency. It began when a group of patrons, whose skin just so happens to be black, entered the famed Laugh Factory Club in Hollywood and interrupted Michael Richards' set by being loud and heckling the comedian, a comedian whose skin just happens to be white. Michael Richards then launched into the most vile of rants ever caught on camera. At first, the audience seems to think that Michael Richards is joking, playing a character, but then he screams out a racial slur. Which racial slur, you ask? Well, it's the one that, uh, the, the, the one that starts with N. 
The one that they call the N-word, you know, that one. And after shouting, screaming, that particular horrible word that starts with an N, over and over in a very aggressive manner, the entire crowd turned on him, and his entire career was flushed down the toilet. Days later, in an attempt at damage control, Michael Richards appeared via satellite on The Late Show with David Letterman. When Letterman's guest just so happened to be Jerry Seinfeld, Richards desperately tried to explain his outburst, and he did his best to apologize, I guess. The whole situation was just so awkward that many in the audience could do nothing but laugh. Which is kind of funny that he got more laughs with his apology than his stand-up. Ha ha. Letterman's studio audience was laughing so much that Seinfeld had to jump in and tell them to stop laughing. Can you imagine a comedian telling people to not laugh? I uh, said some very um, nasty things to some Afro-Americans. Stop laughing, it's not funny. But yeah, by the way, let's talk about the type of insanely great friend Jerry Seinfeld is. Not only did he stand up for his friend, when most people would not, he gave up part of his time on a national talk show so that his friend could address what the f*** happened. And Jerry Seinfeld would stand by his friend even further when he would cast him in the animated film B-Movie, and would even feature him on an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, where these comedians, they got in cars and they got coffee, and they would discuss the incident and its ramifications even further. Michael Richards would stay out of the limelight for a while, instantly retiring from stand-up after the incident, opting to live a quiet life away from show business. Right. I should have been working selflessly that evening. Uh -huh. Most of the time, when I'm in that zone, I am selfless. Right. But he would return with the rest of the cast of Seinfeld for three episodes of the seventh season of The Larry David Show, Curb Your Enthusiasm where the cast reunites to do a reunion show of the classic sitcom. And instead of tiptoeing around it, Michael Richards and the writers hit the controversy right on the head, with several references to the notorious Laugh Factory incident. And you know what? This Curb Your Enthusiasm appearance, well, it actually did a lot to help repair his reputation and just shows that comedy, when done right, can almost fix anything. And no, this wasn't completely fixed, but you know what? What the f*** ever happened to forgiveness? We all mess up. Maybe not that f***ing bad, but you know. Being able to make fun of it and be the butt of the joke, I think it helped everyone move past the incident, kind of. Maybe not everyone. It helped some people. I don't know. I don't know anything. Curve whatever I say with enthusiasm. No, no, no! If only there were a, a horrible name that I could call you that would make you as angry as I am! What? Oh, you... Die! On TV, Michael Richards would make a short-lived comeback, kinda, when he appeared in the main cast of the TV Land series, Kirstie, opposite fellow television legends Kirstie Alley and Rhea Perlman. Sadly, the show would only last one season before being cancelled. But not by cancel culture, by, like, ratings. In 2013, Michael Richards would again earn stellar reviews for his performance in the short film Walk the Light, where he would win Best Supporting Actor at the Los Angeles Cinema Festival, while in 2019 he would appear in a faith-based film called Faith, Hope, and Love that I've never heard of, but I have faith and I have hope that you'll love it.
Yeah, we got a saying in the South. Oh, you're from the South. What part? Detroit, Michigan! Michael Richards has kept out of the spotlight for the most part, which is probably for the best. But the good news, I guess, is because of his iconic role as Kramer in one of the biggest shows ever created, Richards doesn't really have to work again, unless he had like a horrible contract. But yeah, that Seinfeld money, it's gonna keep him set for the rest of his life, and several generations thereafter, if he's smart with it. But it is a horrendous shame that he lost his temper on that one fateful day because Michael Richards is one of the best physical comedians around. He's like Charlie Chaplin mixed with Chevy Chase and like a mongoose. And when he's had a chance, he's actually showed us that he's a great actor. It's been a few years since Michael Richards has been a part of a project, but maybe it's time for a Michael Richards comeback. I don't know, what the f do you think? But you know what, it's okay to give a f about what the f happened to Michael Richards because you know what, there's a lesson in there. And I guess that lesson is uh, don't say racist things, WTF.